Welcome back to Extreme Battle in Resident Evil 2. It's time to take a look at Difficulty 3 and Stage 3. So this shows how little I know about the other Resident Evil games because I look at this character and I'm like, Oh, it's Jill! Uh, Claire! Claire? Claire. Yeah, that's, that's right. Uh, okay, yeah, Claire. Yeah, it's Claire. Yeah, okay. Claire comes equipped with the grenade launcher and all three types of ammunition. And unfortunately, that's it. So... <laughs> I would say, for Claire, you definitely gotta get that submachine gun and that rocket launcher, otherwise you're gonna have one hell of a time keeping all that ammunition in check, and, uh, being able to use it efficiently, because, uh, sometimes the grenade launcher is not good for close quarters combat. Why is it not good for close quarters combat? Well, it all depends on which type of ammunition you have equipped. The actual grenades are good for close quarters, but the acid rounds and the flame rounds are good for far away enemies. And also, the different types of ammo work well on different enemies, such as the ivies dying to one grenade, or uh, sorry, dying to one flame round, as opposed one, to fl one flame grenade. Flame, oh, flame grenade. Yeah, I guess that works. But uh, here's where we get into the big difficulty spike of of us. Uh, Difficulty 3. Storage. There is barely any ammo. You can die in three hits. You only get one ink ribbon for the entire playthrough. So if you die, you're going back. Hmm. And here's where I get to talk about the bomb layout. EX Battle works the same way Resident Evil 2 does. Every playthrough is going to be slightly different. For the case of the EX Battle, the bomb locations are randomized. If you're playing Difficulty 1, the bombs are almost always in the same spot, because it's the easiest. Difficulty 2, they are now slightly randomized, so you might play through two times and find one bomb in the same place, but the second bomb in a different place. In Level 3, it gets randomized every fucking time. That's what we need, a Resident Evil roguelike. Oh, I would hate that so much, and people are already telling me to play a Resident Evil randomizer. I don't think I have the guts to. But there are eight different locations to check around the precinct, and only four bombs. So if you pick the wrong spots, you're taking the long route over to the new area that you haven't checked yet. And who knows, maybe a boss is in front of you in a bomb. Oh, hey, liquors. Oh, great. My favorite. Thankfully, they die in almost one hit to acid rounds. Because they don't have any of that, ple that uh, precious skin to protect them. Right. So Claire has a clear advantage when it comes to, like, type coverage and killing different enemies. The thing is, she's a little bit more frail than Leon. Also, bosses just appear in the middle of a fucking hallway. <laughs> a good strategy with this, especially with that boss, is the little bugs that he spawns. It's just so funny seeing Claire with her rocket launcher just go, No! 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 You gotta beat that shit down before it even, like, attacks you. But the cool thing is, after you kill the main boss, all the bugs go away if you do a screen transition. Which is why I left the room and came back. Okay. Yeah, where'd she go? I guess she didn't go. I guess she left. All right, well, it's all right. Here, right? Well, we give up. We're just gonna dissolve. Uh, while we're going to different parts of the precinct, let me tell you where all these bombs are. I didn't even see that guy! Are you kidding? Enemies also have slightly more health, and they deal a lot of damage to you, so yeah, it's, it's unfair all the time. Here is one of the bomb locations. Go figure, it's not here. That's where it would be! Haha! <laughs> The other seven locations are the Star's Office, the Operation Room, the Night Duty Room, the Cog Room, the Press Room, the Taxidermy Display Room, and the North Parking Lot. Is this why it took six years for you to do these bonuses? 
I thought it was gonna take a lot longer because I started doing EX battle and was thinking, you know what? Difficulty one, pretty simple. Ah! Oh, great. Fuck you! Seriously? <laughs> You're throwing this at me? So that's the final boss of scenario A, just thrown into the middle of a hallway. Yeah, I think running might have been a good idea there. You never want to fight him because, like, two hits and you die. He is a mean motherfucker. And then, of course, Mr. X just in the middle oh, of the hallway. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> All right, one rocket take you out. But wait, I hear more footsteps. What could that be roaming in the hallway? Well, I think it's obvious. It's a second it's Mr. X just in the middle of a fucking hallway. It's Mr. Y! That is so <laughs> mean. Okay, you don't want to go in here because there's two, like, beta liquors in here. And they suck, they have twice as much health, and they deal twice as much damage, so don't go in there. It's just for ammo, don't worry about it. Oh, God. Don't get me started on how long this actually took to get this particular part of the playthrough done. Uh, the keys in the ignition, how long did it take you to, to do all this? Hours upon hours. Because of the random nature of this battle game, there used to be three healing items in that room. There was only one this time. Okay, so you've played every bit of every Resident Evil that there is to play that people care about. Pretty much, yeah. I mean, skipping up Relic Chronicles and Dead Aim and Survivor and all that shit that people mm -hmm. just forgot about. Is this the hardest thing Resi, Resi has thrown at you? No. No, not by far, because they kind of throw you the smallest bit of a bone when it comes to this. The big locations where bosses are, are almost always the same in Stage 3 difficulty. Like, uh, the two Mr. X's in the hallway, they will always be there. Uh, the parking lot where we met Dog Birkin, the funnel boss of Scenario A. It's a coin toss on whether he's there or not, but he's easy to avoid. So, they kinda help you out there. Not a lot. So then, what is the hardest thing Resident Evil's thrown at you? Um... Hmm. The hardest thing I've ever done in a Resident Evil game... I don't know, playing through Resident Evil 3 Nemesis on hard mode was pretty damn difficult. What about Ethan Must Die? Okay, we have a close second. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now, Ethan Must Die is bullshit, but at least there's a method to the madness. Actually, you know, I'm gonna give more points to Ethan Must Die, because in that minigame, there are just some scenarios where you can't win. It's impossible to win. True, and that's kind of the nature of it. Mm -hmm. Oh, hey, you found a scenario where you just have no ammo and no guns and only a knife? Have fun fighting Marguerite! <laughs> I wasn't even doing anything! God! You were about to. You were looking at me funny. Alright, here's another location of one of the bombs. Are we gonna find one in here? Uh... Well, we're gonna find a few ivies. Oh, and um, another thing. There is a weapon part in here. If you're playing as Leon, you can... F uh, wait a minute. Sorry, that was a different one. Um, in the precinct in the evidence room, uh, a place we've already skipped, uh, you can find the magnum parts for Leon. But hey, we found a virus bomb. <laughs> Completely incinerate. Yeah. <laughs> Doctor, I have a cold. All right, clear. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> just imagine, this is the way we can destroy coronavirus, dude. We just need to get the virus bombs. Now, does it kill only the virus, or does it kill humans, too? Or, well, technically humans are a virus, so I mean, mm -hmm. hey. We are a plague upon the earth which we stand. Wow, look at all these sleeping zombies that could have attacked me, because I didn't know they were there, thanks to the camera angle. And that one guy laying in the back like, If I don't move, <laughs> she won't set me on fire. Do you guys smell something burning? 
Oh, dogs too. Great. There needs to be like an item that you can throw or drop to distract the dogs. These guys are assholes. That'd be nice, you know, just rip an arm off a zombie and just toss it across the room. Go get it, guys. No, no, no. Rip an arm off a zombie, dip it in, like, chocolate, and then <laughs> give it to him. <laughs> you killed the zombie dogs using chocolate instead of bullets. You gotta think if you want to survive in this world. Well, all right, but that sounds like something Dead Rising would do. Well... Why didn't the, they innovate more, huh? The ultimate crossover finally realized. Oh, God. Yeah, that was a nice uh, off-screen hit there. Uh, another small bone I'll give to Difficulty 3. If you know the layout of the police department, you are absolutely golden. Like, I am taking the furthest routes away from danger as I possibly can. Because, who knows, maybe there'll be a bomb in the location I'm heading to. And also dying many, many times and replaying the same thing over and over again. Lovely. Helps out a lot! Also, hey, you noticed I saved in this, right? You have a missing ink ribbon, yes. Yep, so no more ink ribbon. I've made my one save for this entire playthrough. How many times do you think I died? How many cells are in your body? Not that many, but it's a few. It's quite a few. 28. No, not that many. Actually, less than you think. But three. One really cool thing here very close in fact you may have hit it right on the head we'll see at the end of the episode hey what's cool is every time you start an extra an extreme battle stage excuse me the bombs are already placed so if you want to get a better score on stage three find out where the bombs are hit reset and then go find them again in their exact spots uh. I don't know why you would want a high score in a game that doesn't have online leaderboards or something like that. Maybe for bragging rights? I don't know. To be better than your little brother. I guess. Oh, sweet! There's two. Why do you need all those antivirus bombs? I think two would be enough to take care of the T-virus. We're gonna blow up a train. Oh, by the way, we're going to be jumping around every now and again because there's a lot of backtracking in this episode. Oh, thank God enemies don't respawn, do they? No. I don't think they respawn even if you take too much time. I don't think that was included until... later games. Because in Resident Evil Zero, when you were playing the Leech Hunter minigame, enemies eventually respawned after, like, ten minutes or so. Please, no. Oh, God great. damn it. Alright. Um, this sucks. So, getting hit in difficulty three is bad. There were times where I was on fine, but had gotten hit twice by some, like, like small bugs or something like that, and the next hit killed me. So, three hits, that's it. Yeah, I'm not taking damage lightly. Like, I might say fine now, but I would equate this to, like, yellow caution. Can you store the bombs, or are they stuck with you? I believe you can. I've never actually tried it. As soon as you get the fourth bomb and leave the room, the game's over. So that's mainly why I'm keeping them with me, just in case I find oh. that fourth bomb, and then I'm like, oh, sweet, I'm out of here. So that you gotta find them and then take them somewhere, then bomb set, see ya! Yep. Yeah, I actually love how this game ends. It's so, like, overly dramatic and silly. Resident Evil, over dramatic and silly? <laughs> Are we playing the same game series here? Oh my god, next you're gonna tell me that if it isn't goofy, it becomes too serious and becomes a really shit game. Eh, yeah, you kidding? 
Resident Evil always has a sleeping bag nearby because it's so camp. <laughs> Even in 6, which was considered a commercial failure, it had some really goofy moments. In between all the boring, you know, boring bits. Yeah. I still remember when I, when I showed you uh, Chris Redfield going down the slide. Wee. Look, Piers, I'm, uh, I'm having fun. That's nice, sir. <laughs> Can we please move on? <laughs> watch me, Piers, watch me! Yes, yes, I see you, sir. Yeah, very nice. I'm glad you're having fun. Now, can we please get back to the mission of the giant invisible water snake, please? I want an ice cream! <laughs> I can imagine- can you imagine, uh, Chris Redfield with, like, one of those little propeller hats holding a balloon and eating ice cream? Well, he really took his men's death really hard, <laughs> didn't he? He's having a hard time. Ooh, that took two hits for some reason. That sucks. Alright, there's another one. He's right here! Missed. Oh, uh, missed again. Got him. Okay. So you're looking at the damn thing. You sh I should be able to see it too! Yeah, the hitboxes on some of the enemies when it comes to the different weapons is strange. Like, shooting a rocket at a liquor that's, like, firmly on the ground won't miss for some reason. Damn it. So, this is another location... And it did not have a bomb. Skipping ahead. I heard a cut. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there are... There's a couple cuts in this video here. Oh, uh, I'm gonna show you this room. This room is full of dogs, and I think in difficulty 3 it evolves to liquors. Is it worth it for ammo? Maybe. It depends on how much ammo you have to get the ammo. Right. You're gonna have to fight tooth and nail, or take a f take a hit, and then run past that. And I don't feel like doing that because I've already played this way too many times to count. And now we're gonna need the rocket launcher. I'll give you three guesses as to why we need the rocket launcher. Because it looks cool. Well, there's your first guess, and you are right. Because she's gonna sell it for a high price. Oh, uh, we could also do that. That is also a valid answer, but not the answer I'm looking for. She, she's gonna throw it to Alice so she can finish off the final boss for her. Ooh, you, I, I don't like the name Alice when used in the Resident Evil context. Thank you very much. It's literally how the fifth movie ends. Oh, no! Alice is about to die, big no. zombie dude's about to take her out, and then Jill picks up... Or was it Jill or Claire? I don't remember. It's one of, one of two. those two. She picks up a, a submachine gun and does what any good soldier would do. Alice, here! Tosses it to her. I hate the movies so much. I can stand the first three, but the other three are... Oh my god. And now Capcom's coming up with more Resident Evil movies. They got, what, a CG series on Netflix? They're making another live-action movie closer to the games? I think it's because horror movies have changed in the past, you know, five, ten years. It's, becoming, it's become more artful, more underground, and I think uh, big companies want to get a... They want to get a leg up on that because, you know, people like Bloomhouse are funding all these... You know, less big budget horror films and just you know, kind of more underground, lower budget indie films that you know bring back so much money, like The oh. Conjuring and Get Out and Happy Death Day and stuff like that. I think it's also shown how Capcom has aged a little bit. Like they were, I don't know what they were thinking in letting Paul W S Anderson touch the Resident Evil franchise, but I think now they're saying, you know what, guys, we've had a bit of a renaissance. Let's try this Resident Evil movie thing again. I think I think they've found their their groove in terms of what kind of horror tone they're going for. Oh, the music has changed. This means uh -oh. we have three of the four bombs. It's now a race to see how quickly I can find that last bomb. It's not like they're going to explode or anything. It's to see how long I can last before I find that fourth bomb. Oh, there it is. I wish so much do I wish that it was just right there. 
Because at this point, I've been playing this for hours. I'm like, okay, we got the third one. Now please, brain, don't forget where I can find any of the other bombs. Come on, remember the locations and let's do this shit. Hands shaking, knuckles white, eyes bloodshot. Oh, absolutely. Heart hair, rate. hair falling out. Heart rate goes up a little bit, and it's just like, okay, just remember everything. Lesions appearing on your body. Just... And also, we're running out of ammunition, unfortunately. The the good ammo that I was using this entire time. So I'm eventually going to have to change over to grenade ammo, which is okay. It's just very short range, and I want things to die away from me. By the way, no smoking. It's bad for your health. <laughs> you gotta love old-fashioned zombie noises. Yeah, it, it used to be. Oh, now it's. Yeah, now it's just gargling. They don't even say brains anymore. Really, they don't really eat brains that much these days. It's just, it's mostly like you know, jugular, jugular. <laughs> Just imagine if zombies were really vocal about what they wanted to eat off you. It's like, wrist. Ring finger. Ring finger. Appendix. <laughs> They're going for specific organs. Maybe, uh... Maybe one of the zombies had a medical degree, so they're like, Metacarpals. Mentula Blancada. <laughs> oh, wait. Oh, he's forming words. I wonder what else he wants to say. Heart. What? Of course, if I were a zombie, I would do whatever I could to retain my human side. So I'd go, Ribeye! Ribeye! <laughs> and when the waiter brings you over your ribeye, you, like, start biting him instead. It's like, oh, sorry, getting used to this. Uh. No, I'm going to hold on to my human side, so I'm going to bite his neck and use his blood as steak sauce. Specifically steak sauce? Yes. Okay. I wonder if zombies actually do become a real thing. Who's going to be, like, the cure, I wonder? By the way, there's another bomb location. What would the cure for zombies be if it were real? Chemotherapy? Hmm. I don't know, maybe a venting sesh? Uh... An all-you-can-eat buffet? Maybe it could be like vampirism in that you only get the powers or the, the, the urge to eat and hunger. And then when, once you eat your fill in blood, you're like, you know, all right, all right, I, I think I'm good. And then, you know, a couple days later, it's like, hey, guys, I'm starting to get... Uh, I, need, I need some blood. <laughs> well, what are the advantages of being a zombie? Like, getting... Like, rotten bones or something like that? It's higher pain tolerance? Well, okay, I can see that. Okay. L lowered appetite, so probably good diet. Yeah, I'm gonna be hella thin, but unfortunately I, I eat people, so, uh... Yeah, you know, you win some, you lose some. Watching this footage playback, I can tell what I was feeling at the exact moment I'm watching. <laughs> Gotta be careful! Get some herbs! I'm not gonna die! Okay! <laughs> so yeah, many yeah. healing items! Like, whenever I see a slight delay in decision-making, I'm like, oh god, I'm thinking of the next scenario. <laughs> okay. Now, the thought in my mind is, okay, I've got three full heals. Which is unheard of in difficulty 3 because everything's so scarce. You're so good. So I'm thinking, here's what we're gonna do. 
I'm going to stock myself fully with healing items and ammunition. If I find that last bomb, the game is over. And if I don't have space, sack a healing item, and then, bam, we got the bomb, we're gone. My hope is that it's in the star's office, because if it's not, the whole thing is fucked, because that means we have to go to the other side of the precinct, and I have oh, no, no idea what's there. Oh, no. It could be anything. It could be more liquors, which means I have to fight in close quarters, and liquors are ranged and close. So please, please, let it be in the star's office. It's right here. Oh, and dogs. Oh, lovely. But grenades kill them in one hit. Yes! And that's three more grenades you don't have. Well, somehow I ended up with 60 coming into this part of the playthrough. Could you potentially take out multiple dogs with one grenade uh, blast? Yes, you can. So the bomb isn't here. No! We're going the long way. We got oh no! A couple more locations to check, and I have no idea what's on the other side. Okay. Fair enough. Oh man. Let's do it. Great. So now I'm like looking at the map going, you've got to be kidding. Yep. I know where it is. It is in the final spot that it can be in. <laughs> of course it is! Uh -huh. you, think it's, you think it's always like that? No, I've... Uh, actually, we're going to see in the next bonus, there is a playthrough where everything just falls into place and we're immediately out of there. So, it's all randomized. Oh, spiders! It's kind of cute. Now, this is the shortest route back to the main lobby, which is kind of the connector for all the different areas. But first, more dogs. <laughs> and I was panicking. I was like, oh, Jesus no. Christ, they hit me <laughs> twice. Okay, we're fine. Now we're down to one healing item. Uh-huh, which means I either have to play it safely or find a heal a, a, dog. Uh, a save box. I don't know how that killed that dog. Like I shot backwards or something like that. Oh, <gasps> yeah, beautiful rounds. ammo. Okay. So, there was an area where we came out of the underground and we found, like, the, the office part of the uh, police station that had dogs in it. So, I've killed almost all the dogs. I could go the long way around and come out that same back area. But I have a different idea. Let's go through the front way, right here, and two more rooms, and we're done. All right. Guess what? The fucking final boss from Scenario A is in this hallway. <laughs> nope! I am not only scared, but furious. How dare they? I've already dealt with this thing like three other times in this playthrough. So why don't we, you know, take the rocket launcher with us and finally kill that thing? I'm fucking around. But the thing is, he's off screen, so I have to listen. Okay, listen closely. All right. One, two. Got him! Whew. Okay. Alright. Alright. Get that goddamn bomb already. Sweating. Just <laughs> please. Please let it be here. Otherwise I have no idea where it's at. Oh, and there's only zombies in here, so that's okay. Can't quite see them though. Oh, there's one. I love how bad the sound design is in this old Resident Evil game. There are two weapons that clip the audio every time. 
It's the fully upgraded shotgun and the grenade launcher. It's so loud, the sound, uh, the sound card literally can't handle it. It's, it's hysterical. So those two side rooms to the right have ammo caches and possibly healing items. But I know exactly what is in this room. There are two ivies. I have fire, kill them quick, see if the bomb's in here. Gone. Gone. Is the bomb in here? Yes! 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 Get rid of that healing item, give me that bomb. Go, 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 and go! Now, the end! <laughs> How in the fuck did you? <laughs> and now we get this nice little cutscene. was literally why we needed the four bombs. All right, now how do we detonate them? Well, the timers are set. Now we just need to run off into the sunset. Goodbye! <laughs> gotta go fast, gotta get out, gotta move! <laughs> and she was never heard from again. And that's it. Mission complete. God, sounds like she died. Thanks to your efforts, the hazardous virus has been eradicated from our world. All of humanity has been saved from the terror of this biohazard. The mission was completed successfully. Stories will be told for generations to come about your great achievement of single-handedly overcoming all adversity. Congratulations, hero! By the way, that little imagery there, you only get if you beat uh, level 3 difficulty. And there's our final grade. But wait, who's that there? You are great. Ah, oh, Chris. Oh! Chris is the final character you unlock for beating Difficulty 2. So what do you get for unlocking or beating Difficulty 3? You get that special imagery of the sunset when you finish the game. That's it. That's it. So, uh, hey, we unlocked our new character, and he didn't get a chance to shine, so why don't... We do that next time on Resident Evil 2. But first, a lot of death. Death! Fuck these bugs. Oh. Oh, yeah, just have it burrow its way into your neck. Mm hmm. Yeah, they burrow in and then they snap you in half. Thankfully, they didn't show that because I don't want to see Claire die like that. Nor do I want to see her die like this. Fucking dog's a shapeshifter. Or teleporter. Ah! Oh, uh, what? Task. And, uh, those are the unique deaths that I happen to find. Yeah, we died by a dog again, but, uh, it's all done. We are technically done with EX Battle, but let's do one more ultra sped up, and let's see how Chris Redfield deals with this biohazard threat. Alright.